Hello and welcome to Red Band Trailer. I'm your host, Diablo Cody, and I just finished interviewing Sarah Silverman. Now, as you can see, I'm all wet, but that interview sure wasn't. Find out what happened in the Red Band Trailer. Come inside for I don't hide from me. from me. So like are I can't you okay create... with your backpack being in the shop? We're yeah, cool it. it's my transitional object. What if I need something? What if I need lip gloss? What if I need gum? What if I need a hat? What if I need a Ziploc of some baby wipes? What if I need... Do you know Terrence Howard? He has, like, from Hustle and Flow. And from like, Law and Order LA. Yeah, he's obsessed with baby wipes. And he says, like, all women should use them every time they wipe. I do. Well, then he would love you. You should date him. I read your book, The Bedwetter, which is incredible. And so I already feel like I know you. Uh -huh. But I'm going to ask questions anyway, as if I don't know you, and you're going to play along. Right? Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. Very naturally. Look. Well, watch out what a good actor I am. I really want to prove this late. Okay, go on. Normally when we do this show, I start out in kind of a James Liptonian way where I say, mm. like, you were born in New Hampshire. I bet you like... It feels so nice to be known. I, I, you, I, you are known. You're, like, my favorite person. I mean, I don't mean, like, known. I just mean on a scale of, like, it's nice. Like, I know like, where you were born. Like it's someone, like, you're so nice, and it's nice that you know that, like, you're, like, you know... You wrote a best-selling book that, ex that that told everybody that you were born in New Hampshire. All right, okay. But, but it's I didn't just, have to dig deep. Know, With you, I actually, I kind of want to skip past all that stuff because I'm so interested in your career. <laughs> you started doing stand-up when you were a teenage girl. Uh -huh. When you're a teenage girl, it's like the most self-conscious time in your life, and you were getting up in front of audiences doing what is arguably the most terrifying job in the world. How did you do this? I just always wanted to be a comedian. I don't know. I... So love propelled you forth? I could probably answer it. I don't, I'm afraid it's trite. Like, it's so many, pro probably so many people's stories, you know, but, like, a combination of being, like, just physically Jewish in a totally non-Jewish environment, you know, literally just being hairy, you know, in a you sea were surrounded of blonde L.L. Bean people, you know, with, like, hairy legs. Like, my mom wouldn't let me shave, and it was, like, humiliating, you know. And then being a bedwetter and having to go to sleepover camp. Like, the survival, I, I would say, looking back, objectively, uh... Is that the right word? That, um, I don't think you can be objective about yourself, but... You're right. Looking back subjectively. Subjectively. Yes. Um, I would say that those various things of humiliation, plus having support for my family as, like, being the one that makes them laugh, but, like, the, it's survival skills, right? Mm-hmm. So do you think you are, the, like, the sad clown archetype that comedians always talk about? I think that's how it started. But, um... You're a happy clown now? Well, I, I want to be happy. I, I really want to be happy, you know? So I, I don't romanticize the sadness. Like, I think a lot of comics kind of romanticize this dark, you know, thing. And um, I think those, those people don't really know what sadness is. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> it's just like they're I want to be happy, you know, so I go to therapy. I've, I've d gone to therapy and stuff and um, to try to unlearn the things or get a perspective or try to figure out like what I'm basing my feelings on or blah, blah, blah. I feel like I'm being so No, this is awesome. Boring. I feel like this isn't the kind of discussion that I've seen you have on camera mm. before. So it's interesting to me that a person who is admittedly very anxious or compulsive would be willing to to create this really outgoing really brash persona do you feel that that sarah silverman that people know is like a character that you created or do you feel like you were being your authentic self as a performer i feel like i'm it's me like i'm pretty much myself but um sometimes i'm like a an asshole version like the you know sometimes i have a character like when I did that, Jesus is magic. Yeah, you know, and I, I, I feel like I'm pretty much myself. I, I am. I think, I, but I think that it's you know just one part of me. So it's, a lot of people will come up to me and they'll be really gross and you know they'll say something disgusting or tell me something like, 
so and I feel like they don't you know like part of me is a lady you know what I mean so yeah. it's like when they say it to me it's like in my inside me I'm like Ugh. so I want to talk to you about Mr. Show obviously one of the greatest shows ever how did you get involved with those guys you, we all, just hung all out. hung out together yeah we all hung out I mean it was just like a time where we all there was like a bar called I want to say Fellini's or Finelli's. It was on Melrose, and it's not there anymore. Really. And that's where everyone would just go at the end of the night. And it was like Bob and David and Janine and Kathy Griffin and Jack Black and like I mean like looking back a crazy who's who, you yeah. know, Karen Kilgariff and all these people that became you know like that were and became great performers and writers and my favorite Mr. Show sketch featuring you is the indomitable spirit which I can explain to the viewers it's about this band made up of disabled people uh, uh, one guy has no Handy arms. Handicapable people. Handicapable people. And one guy has no arms and one guy is just a head. And they, they go around saying what their, what their disability is and then Sarah says, Hi, I'm Fran and I'm a woman. <laughs> it's such an amazing commentary on the way people view women as being crippled by the very fact that they're women. And I'm wondering if you feel like you had to have an indomitable spirit to overcome sexism in the industry. You know what I love about that too is it just passes. Like it's not like there's not a spotlight on the I'm Fran and I'm a woman. Like yeah. ah, it just no, kind it's, of like it's, passes it's, and the keeps timing going. Of that is so amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, like young girls will go. Uh, you know, how do you like be a woman comedian? Like how do you? You know, it's like well, just be really funny. Just be really yeah. really funny. For a long time in comedy, if they did a young comedian special or this or that you had to have a woman on the show. Like there had to be a woman, you know, like a black guy and a woman or, you know, whatever. And a lot of women got airtime that weren't ready or weren't funny. And I think that perpet instead of helping women in comedy in some way, it perpetuated this thought that women aren't funny. Yeah. Because like, there were women illuminated that weren't necessarily funny yet. I mean, there have always been great, fun, hilarious women, but, you know, just because it, it, it almost seemed like a quota thing, you know, where I would always feel like, if, if none of the women make the cut, fine. But if four women make, you know what I mean? Like, it should just be whoever's funniest. Yeah. That's what helps women be the funniest. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I feel like we live in a time where, I mean, my favorite comics are women, you know, with no leniency. I mean, that's, that's the problem more is like when it's like, oh, she's, she's funny, you know what I mean? Like there are hardcore, f hilarious women that are yeah. at the top of comedy right now, you know, it's pretty exciting. And I mean, it sh I agree with you, it should be a meritocracy, same way with writing. The yeah. thing is, I, I think there are some people who view the very act of being a woman in the business as a shtick, which is so unfair. Right. Like, oh, people like her because she's a hot chick and funny. And it's like, well, like a person can't help the fact that they're female and appealing to your eye. Like that's that's not a gimmick. That's that's the way they were born. They just happen mm. to be funny. And I'm sorry if they give you a boner. And I've talked to other female. Meanwhile, it's like, look this. at Steve Martin. Like he's <laughs> gorgeous. Like, exactly. I mean, Nobody he's, ever says he's... Steve Martin's famous because he's hot. I know, and he, I mean, look he's at his cute. career. I mean, hes he was gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, he still is, you know, he's an older man, but he's still handsome, but it's like, he was gorgeous. Wouldn't you say he's, like, classically good looking? Yes, he's a very handsome man. And just, like, sec I mean, most women think Steve Martin is sexy. Yeah. yeah. Are you thinking about him now? No. I just it's, said it that. It seemed today. like you it kind of, like, like... Yeah, I was just like, yeah. It seemed yeah. like you were drifting away. Mm. He's cute, yeah. Well, listen, I know that we've had, like, a really kind of kind of cool and serious discussion here in the Red Band trailer today. But I was wondering if you want to lighten things up and go play Red Band Buckets with me in the yard. Do I ever? Let's do it. Welcome to Red Band Buckets, the royalty-free, non-branded bucket series. It's a bucket game that is in no way affiliated with any other bucket game you might have ever seen on TV. So. Or on WGN every day of your life growing up in Chicago. Please. Let me explain the rules to you, Sarah. You're going to stand mm -hmm. with your toes behind this line. You are going to hit each bucket with a ping pong ball. You gotta get the ping pong ball in 
and then each one you hit, you're going to get a new prize, and the prizes get progressively more awesome. I can't wait. Awesome. Every prize is amazing. I've seen oh, them myself. Oh, God, I love prizes. And there, we picked out special prizes that we think you in particular are going to like, because oh, I know a lot about you and I care about you. Oh. All right. All right, bucket number one. Drum roll, please. Yes! She did it. What did she win? This is a folder for your jokes that I made for you. Oh my God, can I just tell you, I just bought a folder, but it's not good. And it doesn't say jokes on it or have a meerkat. I'm, I can't, I'm so excited because I need it. I'm hoping that there are pockets. <gasps> there yes, you go. I need pockets. Well, why don't you put that aside because right. there's more buckets to hit. Okay, I fished this for you. Oh, sorry. There's more buckets oh. on your bucket list. Yes! She did it. We, we know, know how you much love you love hair ties. Ponytails. Oh my God. Look. I needed a new hair ball. The, and it's in, a, it's in a ball and it's in an ice cream cone. It's fantastic, right? Oh my God. You see how we tailored this for you? Uh, this is crazy. Well. Bucket number three. This is where it starts to get good. Yes! Oh, she's done it again. Now, uh -uh. I don't know uh -uh. if it came this way, but it's a notebook for you with maybe a special message. Oh my God. It's for jokes too. And it has a bracelet that I expect you to wear that I put my initials on. It's like a cuff, right? Yeah. It's so like, casual on so her. So I never forget who my best friend is. Diablo It's the is. best day of my life. All, All right. right. On to four. Here it comes. Mm. I don't think you can throw with your incredibly important rubber best friend cuff. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. It's kind of like a disease awareness bracelet. This isn't Except coming Except now off. I'm your disease. Oh, staggering. You're actually really good at this. You're on a denim streak right now. Have you heard of pajama? Oh my jeans? God, pajama jeans. They're kind of big though. <gasps> yeah, they yeah, seem to be. Yeah, but you grow into them because you don't ever have to leave your house and you can watch TV all day and night in your jeans. It's and actually then true. They, you grow into them and then they stretch with you and then eventually they become a part of your body. They graft with your skin? Yeah. The, I think that the fabric, I think that's what they advertise. Like actually. if you cut yourself, like a scab will form above the pajama <laughs> jean. Go on. Okay, last one, best prize of all. Yes! And you get... Wait, that's my bike. This portrait of shattered innocence. That's my bike. Well, I think Listen, she should I'm have sorry. it. No, you can't have my bike. It's okay. Look you how beautiful it is, and look how often I use it. No, it would be, I would like to see her on it. I no, think. don't get on my bike. Brooke. It's her bike. Oh, Brooke? Yeah, Brooke. Call me ma'am. <gasps> I'm not calling you by your name, you Diablo. For me. You work for me, Lewis. I work for I, no one. This is free. I'm not even in the union. No! Oh, I can't believe I just got pushed into the pool with my clothes on. The things I do for this show. Bye, Sarah. Drive safe on my bike. Come on, Robert Pattinson.